Nick, glad you showed up because, I'll be honest, I thought we were going to be talking to you, and then the schedule changed. Do you officially have the weirdest UFC career in history? I mean, a co -main They're event, after me. Right? They're out to get me. I mean, it's crazy, right? Like, last time, we're like, co -main event, how the hell is he in the co -main event already? Now it's first fight on the card, I guess? They wanted to bring some eyes to the prelims, so it's all good. <laughs> did, when did you find out that you were the first? I mean, probably just the last day or so, like us? Yeah, yeah, last couple of days. I didn't think too much about it, um, but, yeah, I think, like, two days ago, three days ago. So, it's all good. I mean, but like coming into this week, I think we thought you were the co-main or on the main card. Were you, were you thinking about like, hey, I'm back here again? Yeah, yeah, no, 100% I was, but it's all good. It's just a little roller coaster of uh, emotions going through that, but it's all good. It happens. I mean, or it not, doesn't happen at all, but it's all good. I was going to say, I'm not trying to stir the pot, but I mean, yeah. is it all good or are you just trying to be nice right now? Well, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm not going to burst in. I got to get the job done first, and I'll talk about it after. But um, I, I, I don't know uh, I don't know what that whole ordeal is. I'm not trying to get too much into it and think too much about it. But, um, yeah, let's just get the job done Saturday. Then I'll have my input after that. <laughs> what, what did you think about your performance last time out? I uh, just had to get the job done. I rewatched it a couple times. It was all right. It was cool. Um, Puno's just a dangerous guy, and you got to respect it. He's arguably probably one of the most explosive punchers in the middleweight division. Um, so you just had to respect it. I felt like I was doing good everywhere. Um, even after the cut, I think I was doing all right. Um, I thought I won the fight pretty clearly. Um, but he, he's good. You know, I, I respect him and, and his skill set. He's a good fighter. I spoke to Andre last week. He said he actually asked to fight you. Do you know if that is if that's no? Happening? That's cap. That's a lie. Uh, I asked. To, I actually tried fighting him in LFA a year and a half ago. He didn't want it. Him and Trey Shango are the same two people because I've been trying to fight him uh, last two years since COVID. Neither of them wanted to fight because both of them had COVID during that same time frame. Um, and then I, after my last fight, within 24 hours, I was like, let's keep this ball rolling. Like, let me fight this guy or that guy. And then Petrovsky was like the only guy that didn't really have a fight in that time frame. So I was like, that made perfect sense for me. I've been wanting it for over a year. You know, I already had my eyes on him. So, uh, yeah, I've been wanting it. <laughs> he says he's the best wrestler in division. What do you make of that? Oh, we'll see. Everyone says something, and then Saturday rolls around, and they got a different, different answer for it. So we'll see. But, yeah, he's got a, he's got a big old Philly mouth. <laughs> you guys do obviously have great grappling pedigree. So I do wonder, like, me as a grappling fan, like, I want to see it grapple, but sometimes that means two guys end up standing and banging. What, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, his grappling pedigree compared to mine, I think we're on different planets. I'm placing out world championships, Pan American championships, national championships, winning them, and he hasn't even competed in them, can't even compete in them. You know, it's just different levels I think we reach in the grappling department, and I think it'll show Saturday uh, just how different in worlds apart we are. Um, but I'm excited, you know, where, I'm, I'm comfortable wherever the fight goes. You didn't have to come talk to us today, right? You didn't have to do the media obligation, but you were willing to do so. So why, why were you willing to come here? Because you guys are great people, and I like talking to you guys. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. So you're all right yourself. You're all right yourself. Last thing for me, then, I guess, you know, anticipating this fight, what do you see? I mean, is this, do you feel like this is going to be another, you know, back-and-forth war? Do you think this is one you can dominate? What I think it's a finish. I think it's a UFC fighter versus a regional fighter. He was trying to dog on the people I fought, and all of them have winning records, and then the two dudes he fought in the UFC aren't even here no more. And then before that, he was still losing to, or finding people with negative records and losing to people with negative records. I'm like, how are you trying to diss me when I'm finding the top prospects already? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I think he's just kind of delusional, and, and uh, I think it's going to show. And based, and, on, based on your career track record, the only natural next move would be to like headline a pay-per-view, right? That'd probably be like... <laughs> yeah, that's the only move. <laughs> the best move. What's up, Nick? Um, you said that you like to lo lo uh, look at the comments from, from people. The fans have this idea that, that you're this boring fighter. What do you say to that? Oh, it's hilarious, dude. I troll people, too. I don't troll people, but sometimes I do if I'm bored. Like, this week I was doing it because you got nothing to do all week, so I'm just, like, talking back, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I don't really care, man. I mean, like, I got 11 takedowns last fight, so it's like... I mean, I can see how for some people it might be boring, but I think it was just a strategical performance in that sense. In my opinion, I broke the record because I only had three rounds to do, and I think the other guy had five. So in my opinion, I think that's a, that's a record breaker. But, um, yeah, I don't really think too much into it. I read them because I think it's funny because I don't take it seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just have fun. I enjoy it. This shit's tight, you know? But, uh, yeah, people just hate for no reason. But it's funny, you know? It's just it's funny. I mean, we, we, we kind of talked about it before, but, I mean, you, you, you hang around Nick and Nate. You've had, you guys talk shit all the time. Oh, yeah, dude. You'll hear the – yeah. 
I, I don't even want to go there, but it's all good. Uh, yeah, you'll hear some. People go back and forth with each other. You're going to have thick skin. You know, it's, uh, it's just how it is. Yeah, we go back and forth with each other. And speaking of, there's this, uh, there's this viral clip of you, of, of you and Nate and TMZ <laughs> about Hamza. I mean, it, it's, no, I'm down to fight Hamza. I, I'm, I'm for real about that. I think they just caught me. Nate was still talking, and I was just looking at him, and for some reason, the camera pointed at me. So I was like, what the fuck? But um, it happens, I, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm down to fight that fool, though. I don't know why everyone's tripping so hard. I mean, he's a good fighter. Everyone in the UFC is good, though. So, uh, yeah, I'm down I'm with it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.